All right, guys, we've been keeping a little secret. Not only did we move all the way across the country to South Carolina, we have a new baby. So guys, I left South Carolina this morning and I'm now in North Carolina on my way to pick up our very first new animal on our new farm here in South Carolina. And I'm so excited to go and pick her up and show you guys. Be nice, Quinny. She's so little. Amber, what do you think of your new friend? Huh? What do you think of your new friend? What do you think? Do you like your new friend, little dinosaur? What are we gonna name you? What a pretty baby you've got there, Michaela. Thank you. She's only 10 weeks. Hi, Piper. Hi, sweetheart. You're such a good girl. She's 10 weeks old, a Nigerian dwarf goat. Her name is Piper because she is BFFs with Pimber, our emu. So we have Piper and Pimber. So actually, um, there was a sweet, sweet person who reached out to us um, on TikTok. She had watched our TikToks and our YouTube videos and saw that we actually had to rehome all of our animals besides the emu and the two roosters when we moved out to South Carolina because we couldn't bring them all the way across the country with us. Um, it wouldn't have been fair for them to be locked up for a three or four day car ride. It was gonna be just totally unfeasible. So we had to rehome all of our animals. If you saw in our other video, they all went to really good homes. A majority of them are together. And that sweet family keeps sending me pictures and updates on them and they're doing so good. And so it's such a blessing. Lenny in New Zealand is so sweet that she sent me a message and asked if I had um, PayPal because she wanted to send us a small donation to help us get a livestock fund going. We're just unexpected so sweet so random it just made me feel so good inside I think Michaela actually started tearing up when I told her just because it's so sweet for like a total stranger to um, to do that and actually I should read what she told us some people think that we're a little crazy to move all the way out here and to want to homestead full-time and I get it it is a little crazy especially it's so different from um, you know the way that, that we've been living, it's it's a big change for us to do this full time. And so um, just to have somebody believe in us, I know our family and friends, our close family and friends, they believe in us, but to have her send this sweet message and to want to help us um, get some more life on to our new farm was just really heartwarming. It was, it was awesome. She said, I'd really like to give you a small donation to start a fund to buy livestock. And then she sent the gift and through PayPal and she said, spend it as you see fit for animals or pins for them. Much love from Lenny in New Zealand. And then when I sent her, you know, thank you, she says, you're very welcome and I feel blessed as well. There's so much negativity in the world at the moment and it's truly heartwarming to see a young family making a difference. And so I just thought that that was so sweet of her. And um, because of her, we were able to get Piper our first new farm animal at Freedom Forest Farm. And so um, she's so sweet. She brings just a lot of fun and joy to our farm. She, we named her Piper. Charlie wanted to name her Poppy, and I could not do that. <laughs> because every time she'd say, <laughs> every time she'd say, hey Poppy, it just reminded me of like, hi Poppy. <laughs> like, like Poppy, like P-A-P-I. Poppy, hi Poppy. And I couldn't do it. So um, no Poppy, her name is Piper. And when we go out there, sometimes when she, anytime she sees us, especially when she sees the girls, because Michaela and Charlie are the ones who go out and, and, and feed her and put her out in the pen in the morning and stuff. And um, when they get home from school, she knows that she's gonna get played with or that she's gonna get taken for walks. And so when she sees the girls or she sees us walk out of the house into the backyard, she starts yelling so loud and it's the cutest thing, but it's so loud that we tell her, Piper, no piping. And it's kind of like, um, what is that, Dora? Dora the Explorer? No, Where it's Swiper, no swiping, but it's uh, Piper, no piping. Um, 
but she's the cutest thing and so she brings so much joy so um, our whole family just wants to thank Lenny from New Zealand for just being so generous and so um, thoughtful and she totally did not have to do that we weren't expecting it and it was just um, it was so sweet and we really appreciate it and now we have Piper here on our farm and as she grows up, she is going to be instrumental in helping us clear out these uh, the forests on our property. She's going to be instr instrumental in going out and helping eat up that poison ivy and just thaw the brush and clear out the ground for us so we can really get back in that forest. Obviously, she can't do it on her own. We're going to have to get some more animals to help her out. but. Um, and she'll also, once we breed her when she's older, and she gives us some baby goats and also some good milk, some goat milk, so that way we can make goat milk cheese, soap, all that other stuff that um, we love to do with the milk. So we don't drink goat milk. Our family just doesn't care for it too much, so we use it to make cheese and soap, and so we're looking forward to that. So Piper's actually gonna be able to really just help out our family in so many ways. We do not eat goats. Brent and Brayden and I have had goat in Haiti. I just didn't care for, I don't know if it was, I think it was a texture. I just didn't care for the goat meat too much. Um, I know other people enjoy it, but I don't, and so we don't use our goats for meat, we use them for, um, cheese and soap and um, landscaping control so and just because they bring so much joy so uh, thank you again to Lenny from New Zealand we really appreciate you so here's some more of Piper right now who's keeping Pimber our emu company until we find another emu Pimber grew up on our farm in Arizona. Um, we got him just a few days old as a chick, and so he grew up on our farm with our, all of our goats, our pigs, our chickens, um, the pony. He was always around farm animals, and they lived together 24-7. And I know he's um, been pretty lonely since we got out here. And the roosters go and keep him company, but it's not the same. So Piper, he has Piper now, and he's happy, she's happy, and we're all happy. So um, yeah, look at how cute they are together. And here's my other baby. I've got my sourdough starter. It's starting to bubble up pretty good. This is just day two, so I've been feeding it like a little baby. I just need to name it now. I don't know what I really want to call it yet. I need a name for it. What should I name my sourdough starter first? I have to take care of it like a baby, so I need to name it. That's what my friend Randy told me to do. So, help me decide on a name for my sourdough starter. leftover meatloaf from last night. I'm gonna put it in the leftover meatloaf inside of here and then bake it. And it's gonna be yummy. I'm gonna take the leftover meatloaf and put it inside and make empanadas.
be nice and golden brown. Ooh, they look good. Okay, I'm done. sauce that Michaela made. We made mashed potatoes from scratch and then the empanada we made the dough homemade. And we used leftover meatloaf from dinner last night that we made from scratch. We made all these empanadas. Should we try one before everyone else gets on the You want me to just like break it in half? Just take a bite. Ooh, it's nice and crispy. Did mm. you make it the feeling yet? Uh -huh. Until you get to the center, I don't get all of that. It's mm. good. So I got the recipe for the dough that we used for the empanadas um, on Pinterest. I found that on Pinterest, so I'll link the recipe below. And uh, we loved how it turned out. It was a little tough to work with to get it rolled out. Um, luckily, we had my Atlas pasta machine that made it a lot easier. But it wasn't my favorite dough recipe to use, but it actually ended up working out really well for the empanadas and tasting really great. Normally, I get all of my recipes for um, pasta for any of my dough from the Pasta Bible. This is actually a book that I found at Goodwill. It's awesome. It tells you about different kinds of pastas, different flours to use. There's all sorts of recipes. Like this thing is seriously amazing. I see why they call it the Pasta Bible. All sorts of good stuff in here. So I would highly recommend, I'm sure you can get it on um, Amazon too. I'll have to look and I'll link it below if I can find it. But it's not just recipes, but different techniques for making your pasta. So I've been loving going through this. And then um, there's like pasta for soup, stuffed pasta, all sorts of stuff. And then wheat pasta. So anyways, I would highly recommend this book if you guys can get your hands on one. So earlier when you saw me peeling the potatoes and you saw that I was just um, putting them on, like peeling them onto just some newspaper, I am going to actually save these. I'm gonna dehydrate them overnight on a low temperature. So I'm gonna grind these peels into potato powder and then I can use that potato powder later to add to um, thicken up some soups and stews. So it's fall, so when we start making a bunch of soups and stews, I'll use the potato peel powder to um, help thicken up our soup. So that's why I'm saving these and they didn't go into the garbage. And I'm not composting them because the worms actually don't like the potatoes. <laughs> she lets you hold her and rock her like a baby too. Oh my gosh, what are you looking at, Piper? I miss holding a baby. <laughs> you guys wanna see something funny? At least I think it's funny. Um, LOL, our laughing rooster, has um, found his own place to sleep. Doesn't matter where I put him, this is where he goes to sleep every night. And it's annoying and cute at the same time. He is on the window ledge out there. Can you guys see him? He comes to this window ledge, which I don't like because I don't want him pooping all over it. I have to go out there and scrape off the poop. But he's right here by the kitchen window. They have a mango seed growing in this red solo cup on the window. But um, yeah, he chills right there by the window so he can see us, we can see him. And in the morning when I come down here to get my coffee, he um, laughs to say good morning. So LOL sleeps right over here. Doodle actually sleeps on the stairs leading down to the basement. And that's where they have just decided to sleep for the night until we get him a permanent coop 
that is. All right, the light switch. Oh, I have it turned off from inside the house. Never mind. Oh, he's right there. There he is. He likes to sleep on that step right down there. That's where we find him every night. We're waiting for Charlie and Bryant to get home from cheer and football practice so they can eat our yummy empanadas. But it's such a pretty night out. You know, there's a legend that I, people say, and people say that this place used to be a hospital. No. I know. Definitely not. Or like a doctor's office. So, Michaela put all of the garden beds, my raised beds, together the other day. There's 12 of them. We just kind of laid them out for now. I do not like the setup of this. It looks just not cute. And I know we're going to use our um, cattle panels for trellises, so we're gonna have some arches in here, but um, we just kind of stagger the boxes, and then we have the stock tank over here to make the koi pond. I do not like the way this looks. Um, maybe it's just because there's no food growing in here yet, but I do not like the way it looks. So we're gonna have to figure out a better layout for all of this, and then start planting in it. But this um, tree right here, what did we say the name of it was? It was like something winter rose. So this is how it's, what it's called. I don't know how to say it. So it's called the Rose of Winter. And it's gonna have these really beautiful flowers that bloom on it. And so we're really excited because we actually see all these buds on there all over that look oh, cool. like they're gonna start opening pretty soon. And so we're really excited um, for these to bloom and open up and then have all these beautiful flowers. Rose of winter right here in front of our garden area. Michaela. I barely saw him moving. It's really, um, it's not creepy at night, it's eerie. So we get all those pots that are waiting for plants to go in there. <laughs> all those things. Plant me, plant me. Um, do we dare go walking through the trail? No. At night? No. We're good. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Maybe another night, but we gotta get the decorations that Grandma sent us. The fall decorations up on our porch. Hey guys, um, so it's the next morning, kids are all off at school. So I just wanted to update you real quick that last night I was gonna go and dehydrate those potato peels, the skins, and make the powder. But I was looking at them and there was actually just too much green in the peels and the skins. So I uh, decided to toss them because the green is actually an indication that there's solanine in the skins and that can actually be pretty toxic. So I tossed those and I'll just go ahead and um, wait till I get a better batch of potatoes to make that powder and I also wanted to update you guys that the pasta bible that I showed you is available on Amazon for sale in case you guys are wanting to take a look so I'll link that in the description below as well as the recipes that I used for the homemade meatloaf and the um, empanadas in case you guys want to try making those too so otherwise I am uh, going to go and enjoy my coffee and my walk and hope you guys have a great day I'll talk to you soon